okay, so let me start. This is the front end of the software. Uh, I'm going to get into this first. And secondly, I will uh, go over our back office in uh, business intelligence management. We have a time card or time clock for employees to register their hour, take their break, or uh, register their lunch break, 30 minutes or one hour. Okay. The time card in the bottom. Okay. Yeah, so that's integrated here. So let's do that. And um, it says input. You have two choices. You can either give employees a card for them to clock in and out, or uh, they can use just numbers. So they just uh, punch that on the screen. Okay, next, I'm going to start my drawer. So this is a step that needs to be done daily in the mornings okay. or every beginning of every shift. As you can see, every time I enter uh, I, I access any of the functions, it asks for a password. And that's because of tracking, of knowing who was doing what on the system. Okay? Okay. So here it opens the cash drawer automatically. And here we enter all the denominations we're going to start the day with. So I'm going to start with... Uh, it is recommended that you start with $200, by the way, for cash, for change. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna add four, add four, five, twenty, and eighty, one hundred, eighty, and one hundred. Okay. It also prints out a re uh, report from the receipt printer with all the amounts entered. So that's all you gotta do, and you're ready to start taking orders. Just Quick service, I guess somebody just came in and ordered something and you just want to send it to the kitchen and pay for it right away, right? We would take use takeout for this. We do have dining, yes. So I'll show both. I'll show you the dining function too. So right. um, this is just an example of a menu, okay? So I'm going to start selecting my items. So I have this uh, very straightforward item. You just touch on the item. Uh, or we have this other type of item which has, for for example, this shrimp with sauce, uh -huh. where we are required to make other selections, for example, the spiciness level, okay? So we have to make a selection for that, and any add-ons uh, can be added, and subcharge or upcharge if needed. Then okay. Then click and finish. So because they paid on the uh -huh. counter, they pay with cash or credit at the bottom. We have those two options. Let's say cash. So simple, you simply enter the amount the customer is giving you in cash, press OK, and the system will show you a change, uh, what change needs to be given. So the drawer obviously opens automatically here. You put the money okay. in, you give the change back, and then you print the receipt or not to print. Gotcha. Okay, so at that point, immediately it prints the order in the kitchen. And you have two options as how the orders show in the kitchen. You either have a re kitchen printer or you can have an actual monitor or like display um, where it shows in the kitchen. And the, they just clear the kitchen, I mean the orders from the screen <coughs> instead of the orders screen. being printed in paper. We have those two options. Nice. All right, so let's take an order. Um, let me show you dining. So let's go back to the main screen. So I'm getting into dining right now. For dining. Uh -oh. I'll lose you. Okay. And for dining, uh, we put the tables how exactly what you ha how you have them in the restaurant, and we put the names, the the numbers, whatever, however you assign the tables. So let's select table two. Okay. When I hit table two, I go to my menu. And I can start uh, ringing up items again. Let's say these soup. Okay, here's how this works. We're going to set different parties. Have you ever been to a teppanyaki restaurant like Benihana or something like that? Do you know how that works? Where the chef cooks in front of you, there's different parties there? Yeah, I've been to those. Yeah, right. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the type of restaurant this is. So you're going to have several parties there. And mm -hmm. so it's going to be, and you're going to split this chick every okay. time you start a table. So you just ring in all their dishes, you're going to ring in all their drinks, and then it's going to split the check. It might be a yeah. party of four, a party of two, a party of one, 
you know, you're going to split it. So you're going to split mm-hmm. that check into a minimum of, you know, sometimes it could be 10 checks that you're going to split it into. It might be a, a business party where everybody pays for their own part, or it could be like yeah. three families. So okay. we're going to ring in, you know, ring in mm-hmm. dishes, 10 drinks and 10, and then we need to split it up four drinks on one, four dishes, that thing. So that's okay. how the table service works here. Oh, okay. And then also, okay. is there like, yeah, it's also auto gratuity and things like that that we're going to need. Auto gratuity? Okay, sure. This software okay. has that as well. <coughs> Mandatory required gratuity. It, it, this is, we just got to set it up from the back end. It doesn't need to be mandatory. It could be like something that the server punches as says auto grad this, this check. Oh, that okay. type of thing. So yeah, it could go by check being, after it's split from this after table. It's split. Okay, yeah. That's after it's split, they need too. to go to edit it. Okay, cool. Yes. All right, so yeah, let's check out a table before we can ring things in. And okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, okay, let's so we're gonna ring up. Let's say we have three parties, right? So we're gonna mm-hmm. just add all the items first, like you said. And then and then split the check up. Cool. Drink, and then we're gonna split the check. So we're gonna get another one. Okay. Uh, so we send the order because they're not paying. In that case, we don't select cash credit. We just select order to send it to yeah. the kitchen to print. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that yeah, it might start off with appetizers and then yeah, drinks. Drinks yes. that need to be made at the bar. So they're gonna ring in all their drinks at one time. Yes. Then they're coming, coming, and ringing all their appetizers. Yeah, and they then can they... always keep adding on to the table, of course. Okay, needed. good. Good. So if there's more dishes that are coming, by the way, anything that is added later. Only those two new items will be print, printing in the kitchen. Not, again, everything all over again, of course. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, now, now you got to bring the check. Okay, you print out the check. Click on this printer at the top of the screen. Select the table. Uh, sorry, we got to split the checks first now. So we got to split the check. Select the table. So we have a split function here at the bottom. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I'm looking at the check. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm gonna so I is it drag green. and drop? Yes. Christmas. Highlight and We're splitting drop. the check right now. Just touch. Yeah. This is this is touch monitor. So you are so you just drag it the over. items. Okay. So yeah, we're just writing touch all of the checks. Okay. Pretty simple. We can um split up to fifteen checks at least, right? Can you split up to fifteen checks, Miss? You can ramming mean, as many as you need to, of course. As many I as mean, you want. it's just gonna okay. keep doing. I mean. Okay, I so you just drag three. and drop those dishes. Okay, cool. Drag. She just so did gonna... three for the demo, but uh-huh. but you can do as many as you want. That's the reason why you just like right now. Mm-hmm. Drag and drop. It's slow because we're on Wi Fi. I'd probably go faster if we went off. So so to, um, so what you do is um you do an to uh, Yeah, I'm gonna do that so it goes smoother and I can All right, so I'm going to add another check. By selecting the Add button, I am able to uh, create another check and split it. I have three already. I'm going to do four. Okay. I mean, I, I can do as many as I want. So once it's so all you do is you highlight and touch the check. You highlight so you don't have to drag. You don't have to drag it, right? No, 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 exactly. You touch you, you touch the check that it goes it, into. Then touch where you want to place it in the next check. Okay. And okay. Cool. Once you're, once you're done, you select save at the top. The live demo. Okay. So the first check needs to pay thirteen forty, and then accept cash or credit card. Okay. 
So I'm gonna just do cash. Okay, they have a they have a cashier based system where they have a cashier where the server isn't cashing it out. Can their cashier pull up that transaction and clear it out? Yes, the terminals communicate with each other, of course, and they All right, so when if somebody handed a credit card and a check yeah to a cashier, the cashier could just pull it up by that. Correct? Right. Yes. Okay, so someone else can clear that out. Okay, cool. Back to the Next check. So we have okay. three, four, five, six to to charge. So I'm gonna do the rest. Okay. okay. Oh, by the way, we have we we have to print the checks. I didn't mention that. Of course, you can okay. print all of them. So at this point, you will just say to print all the checks by printing all. You take them to them, and then you start charging. So let's charge this person. Select this check. Next, 902, and $10. Next. See that you're uh, you're on check two right now. Uh, I think you're cashing it out, right? Yes, yeah, number two. Yeah. So, um, cool. yeah, I did already like uh, three of them, so I'm still here. So, uh, also you can obviously split payments if needed. So, if you need to split a payment, just click on the partial payment at the top. If they want to use two different credit cards, because it sometimes they do. Let's say eight dollars on this one. You can split the payments into two different credit cards or credit card and cash, process the payment. Just basically just... You don't have that half? You don't have a half button there? For the... Oh, yeah, we do. We have an even amount split for okay, that. Cool. Yes, we do. All right, cool. It's right here at the bottom. You see? Even amount split. I got you. Mm -hmm. I so split I'm just going to do cash. Oh. I have no credit card to charge here. Okay. Yeah. I think the servers, they want the servers to be able to run their own credit cards, but all cash transactions would be done by the cashier. That's how the system would go, I think. So so there's two different, those, there'll be at least two terminals. where the, Yeah. At this, at the, the goal is five terminals. Five? Yeah. Oh, okay. Host, cashier, server? Well, the host is the cashier. You're going to have one in a sushi bar. You're gonna have two for the servers, and then you're gonna have a bar. Okay. Five oh, total. Okay. okay. Um, for the <laughs> bar area. That'd be um, the quick. Yeah. For the yeah, so for the bar area, uh, are they gonna have their own kitchen printer, where they only get their orders, or they print also in that's the bar printer? That's a bar. There's gonna be a bar printer, a kitchen printer, and a sushi printer. Okay. Yeah. So basically, we just what we do is depending on what items they are, we're just going to send them to those specific printers. Yeah. So, you know, not everybody's going to get things they are not supposed to. So I just finished all of them. Okay. Okay. So um, now, as you can see, once everything's paid off, the table is clear, so we can see another party. Okay. 
and that prevents t uh, tables from being left open. So they could print another check and hand another check, an older check or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the, the 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 table won't remain open unless it's all the checks ha have been paid. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and now I'm back on the main screen here. It, um, we have a catering function. Unless you, if you have catering, if or if you ever do, we have that available. Um, we also have this other option for gift cards for store gift cards. You can uh -huh. accept those. They are actually, um, I believe, they are included with the new packages. Um, the pay, pay in and pay out function are to deposit additional change into the drawer. So if somebody's running low in change, the manager can quickly go in here and just add an extra, let's say $2 in change. Same thing, pay out is just to take money out of the drawer. So this is manager so accessible only to because- something out, you, have to, you have to write a receipt and say what that payout's for. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, this gets registered so you will know who you know, who actually or used it, whatever. and it will balance the drawer out. It will minus out the drawer for $10 properly. Also, uh, we have delivery. Uh, no, we don't need delivery, but can okay. you show me the takeout with the caller ID? Or it can detect who's calling from their mobile, pull up their old order, things like that? Uh, yeah, we do have a caller ID. That's that's a, a, a box that actually connects to, to the terminal. And it also connects to the phone line, to, to your telephone. So, oh, you said take out by telephone, right? By telephone, not, yeah, not yeah. by walk, by telephone. Yeah, yeah would, so, so basically it. it's this function here, um, because you do have a takeout option under delivery. I mean, you don't have delivery, but it is takeout. So once the box is connected, in, if no one is using the system, uh, where the box is connected, it will immediately pop up this uh, window with number information. So with the telephone number at the very top, because it's a caller ID. So first time customers, you will only see their telephone number, no name, nothing. Uh, second time customers, yes, because once they call one time, the information will populate automatically for you here. So you don't have to type it every time. You just gotta verify it. Okay. So, so um, let me show you. Um, uh, first time customer. Yeah, you have to enter details. So you ask the customer, uh, what's their first name, last name. Enter the information right here at the bottom. Uh -huh. And. Um, but it, yeah, you it, don't need address, obviously. Uh, so it's it's just name. Okay. That is the force, right? I'm sorry? Caller ID will put that in there for us or no? Yeah, it will. The second time. The second. Second. Oh, okay, time, okay. of course not because I you got to you. register that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It will just show you as because it's a caller ID, uh, the f telephone number where they're calling from. Gotcha. And here, well, you got to do takeout because you're doing takeout. So we're taken back to the menu where we can... Just ring up everything here and click on order at the bottom. Confirm the order for the customer. Mm -hmm. And these orders, if they're calling, are you accepting the payment over the phone in credit card? Or yeah. they pay when they get there? Yeah, by, I the mean, they, they can do it, but not often. I mean, mainly they want to do it in person. If they want to, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you you can do it. If the customer says, I, I, I want to pay over the phone, they can. So instead of you sliding the car on the system, you will type in the information manually, like the numbers on the screen, and process it. Now, if they're not paying, um, then uh, you just got to basically save the order so it remains in the system. Okay. So when they do you get a very high, a high volume of calls with takeout orders again takeout orders I mean, yeah they so, do so, take out all night long so i'm sorry yeah they do take out and dine in you know the tables that we split up in a bunch of checks they get you know on, on the weekends they can get a lot of tables 
Right, okay, because we have uh, online ordering, which actually saves a lot of time for you to you know, accept orders too. I'm just saying that that's available, you know, online ordering, which allows the customer just to immediately pay for the order online, place it themselves. Online ordering uh, orders, they come directly to the system and they go here where it says online order. So the order shows here. So do you guys have the menu, when you develop this menu, do you develop something online? That, Correct. So that, oh, wow, that's cool. So, that, that, so on the website, we just put a link to this ordering. Exactly. That's exactly wow. what we do. So, and this is integrated online ordering. It's not third party, like, you know, Grubhub and all those places that are not right. integrated. You have to have a computer or tablet to actually awesome. see them. So. These orders come through here, and the system does have an internal speaker. Uh, it actually tells you online order. You can hear it, but you can always buy better speakers so it's ve so it can be louder, so anyone can hear it, even if it's loud at a restaurant. And whoever sees the order, they're going to get a notification pop-up over here on the main screen as well, at the top of the screen. So they can acknowledge and see the order, and once it's pay, the customer pays, it shows over here. So then simply you just order it and confirm it, and it prints immediately to the kitchen. Um, and, yeah, I mean, the customer gets a confirmation email with the order, and also you as the owner get a confirmation email as well to have proof of the order that came through. Also, the online orders, um, they get added to your online sales mm -hmm. when you access your management, so you're going to see them too, okay? But yeah, we do have the, the, the option that I show you here for the caller ID for, for phone orders too, if needed. Um, so that's, that's for more manual work, uh, doing it over the phone like that. Uh, and lastly, here at the bottom, we have um, recall, which is where we have all the sales that we have done for today. Okay, There's, this is your, okay. Yeah, so this is just, uh, it, the system records every sale we make. So over here, we have manager functions like voids and refunds. Uh -huh. And this other one is called cash drawer, which just pops the drawer open and is mainly just used for change. This is manager accessible by default if you don't want regular employees to use it. And we no. do have a tip adjustment function. You were saying uh, tips. So when basically the receipt prints a line where the customer just writes the tip. So once they see it on the paper, then the employee or whoever is going to adjust their tip needs to find the receipt, they find the receipt here, and then once it's found, they select the, uh, let's say credit gratuity, or yeah, not cash, but I'm, I don't have a credit card, so I'm going to pretend this is credit, and we add the tip here, let's say just $5, so here the system then it will charge the credit card 19 instead of 14 with tip. So you can print a copy as well for the customer. If he, re if he requests this one, if he's still there, you can do that or just print your own merchant copy to have a record of it. So that's, that's how the tips work. And now I'm going to just close or end uh, the day. So I don't know if you have different shifts. Or do you just share one drawer? Everybody just the servers first. Stuff. I'm sorry. Don't the servers have to get their reports in? Well, we it's we yeah we advise that every shift actually does that be, for better mm -hmm. control of your cash and yeah, so accountability, of, you know, the of their right. drawer. But it doesn't have to be like that. Some owners prefer to just have the drawer open, anyone can take orders and use it, and then the last person leaving or manager 
will cash out and do the account, you know, the counting of the money. That's a cash store banking, but there's all there's a cash store over here now. Oh uh, wait, wait. Server servers need to do their report, so we need a server report too. So you're you're showing a cashier report, but there are servers that have their own. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. So what are you talking about? Is a staff banking? Yeah, staff banking too. You do have staff banking allowed also, right? They can have their own reporting by using staff banking. So they, mm -hmm. under their name, they go to staff bank. So basically, here instead of it will, it will be staff bank for him, for her, for them, mm -hmm. and only f all the sales they make will be only for the specific report. Then somebody else comes, they log in here, staff bank, and because of their code, that's how it will be. The report will be registering only their sales with their so, staff yeah. banking. Okay, so like cashier cash door one would be, you know, John, and cashier door would be. Two would be Joe or whoever. So you could just set up different yeah. servers and all set up their own. Right. Device. Yes. But you still got to have a main person that actually does the actual real closing, Cashier, I guess. Yeah. Yes. yes. And, and for them, it looks the same, actually. It just says at the top of the screen, staff bank instead of cashier out. Okay, cool. Can a cashier close out other servers? Uh, checks? Yeah, if if we allow the permissions well, in the back end, yes. They can access anybody's checks. Will that will that server still get that transaction in their reports? It it gets registered under the person, but yeah. there there is also an, a report in the back office that it actually says the original person who just took the order and then who okay. tendered the order. Okay, so if a cashier, if a hostess, it's called hostess or cashier here. If they cash it out, it becomes their thing. If they tender it, if they accept the payment. So mm -hmm. if you take the order, right, originally, mm -hmm. then I actually take accept the payment. It gets registered under my name. But mm -hmm. the server, you still can't see who actually originally accepted the order uh, through the back end only. You you will see it that you were the one that originally started the order, but I actually I was the one accepting payment. Okay, because here's a situation like you know how bartenders and um, bartenders in some places chefs or whatever they get a percentage of the tips. So at the end of the night, you know this server usually pays the bar a portion of their sales, like say one or two percent of their bar sales. So if it's getting at that if that report does not include their bar sales anymore, do you understand what I'm saying? Do your report show bar sales, food sales, that type of thing? Can you divide categories? Can can you show which different category? You have bar sales, you have sushi sales, you have food sales, you have... Yes, they are, uh, they're called account classes. So okay. we got to create those classes that you said, liquor, food, beverages. <laughs> G, yeah, whatever, you know? that well. Okay. Yes, that needs right. to be created, yeah. All right, so that's going to be important. The this. reporting will show as, however, it's categorized, yes. Okay. So let me close the cashier out here, the reporting. So I'm going to just end my day. Settle, settlement process the credit card payments. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so here it's saying that I have open checks, meaning that for some reason somebody left a check open. It might have been a mistake, and they just recreated the sale again. So you, you can have access to that those open orders, open checks, by going to this function. It's called tender. So here we have the order. So it looks like this person left it open at that time for t uh, 27 uh, and for fifty one dollars forty seven cents, so you will know who did that under their name the time it mm -hmm. might have been just a mistake for so you can ask the person what happened, and then simply if you need to get rid of it, you can edit it and just cancel it and just it just goes away so now we're not gonna see that message. you have open checks because we clear it out. Okay, so let's see. 
So right before doing that, it reminds the person cashing out they to adjust tips if they forgot because you need to adjust tips before you close the shift. I mean, before you cash her out at the end of the day, at night. So they do that and then just continue to close. This is a preview of the cashier out report that actually prints on the receipt printer. So it has all sales inform information, whatever it was done in cash, in credit cards, accepted in gift payment, and if we scroll down, we also have some tax information, discounts information, uh, gratuity that was uh, added, and the deposit we did for two dollars, the withdrawal we did for ten, beginning balance amount two hundred, itemized bills here, and at the very bottom you the system actually calculates if you're short or over based on the what you said you have in cash versus the sales in cash. So people will be able to fix their mistakes if they need to by just recounting the money and maybe, you know, just, they just got to fix their mistake like this. Maybe they typed the number wrong in the boxes, print the report. So that ends the day. So now the cash drawers close. Okay. So those are the main functions here. Um, we also have these two other tabs at the top of the screen. One is announcement, which is basically what what this is is messages that you want to um, you want your to all the employees. Know. Okay. Yeah. So from the back office, you can create a message, something like you know, a new menu special or whatever you know. And okay. operations tab is basically just a quick shortcut or view of some sales reports, some sales reports. This is not the actual, this system is on the cloud, so you will be able to access it online from a browser, the back, the management, and from there you can view your reports. So we give you a login, user ID and password. You log in, and I just logged in, and I'm, what I'm looking at here is the sales reporting area. Mm -hmm. So we have all these different types of reports. Uh, let me show you the first one. It's called Daily Sales Report. This is just a summary of um, total sales for uh, a period. So from here is where you are able to um, uh, print them out. So you have to have, obviously, a, a printer that you can print to. Uh -huh. So, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm show, I'm loading the sales over here. So it shows just a summary of today's sales, whatever was um, in cash, credit, gift card, um, and uh, tax, any discounts given. See here, I I, I did. December to now. So uh, this is a summary. It says from what POS. Uh, that, uh, this is daily reporting, actually. So you see the first, the second. And we have two systems here, so Terminal 1, Terminal 2, per day. Uh -huh. Okay. Any voids or deletions? Oh, yeah. So that's a different report. This is sales only. So okay. that will be from... We have a different section here, void and return, well, void and refund. So voids, refunds, and stuff like that. Uh, so all of these tabs you hear, you see here at the top, this is all uh, sales mainly. This other section here, sales analysis, where these are more in detail reports because you can see hourly sales, um, every a detail of a transaction so it can break it down for you um, to every single detail right. discount reports tax reports employee reports so if you want tax to reports know, uh, like all the liquor and all that all the liquor sales for the entire year can be pulled up anytime right or per month things like that that's pretty easy right 
Yeah, because we categorized it. Yeah, so that that um, right. So that's a, a report that's by by item or category. That's oh, when we out. when we close out that drawer or that that server, can uh-huh. does it show their category sales? Like they sold this much in food, this much in liquor, this much in sushi, yes. or they, it does categorize that's a, it. That's a printing setting that needs to be turned on, so it prints okay. out that categorizing okay. at the bottom of the re- report. Uh, okay, good. I just need to make sure it does that. Yeah, it's just you just need bef- you know, before configuration we gotta know that. So by default, yeah. it's not. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely but, something that needs to be mentioned ahead of time. Okay. Yes, but it does do that. Um, so yeah, it's now we have another section of reports. So this section here is reports um, that show you a graph, all of them, so you can actually so. see something, a chart and a graph. So um, here it's just visual. You can't print anything. It just shows you uh, the picture. So okay, that's, uh, you that's cool. same that's thing. Fun. You you yeah. just uh, search for a period, you know, one week, yeah. one month, whatever you need to see. Gotcha. So just graph of your your sales, okay? Yeah, I'm just gonna search for something that way you can <coughs> see it, and it shows you by category, as you can see, for example, drinks category, and it tells us if we scroll down the quantity of items for that specific category. For example, drinks. 154 drinks for December, and when you on the right hand side, it it itemizes all the different drinks sold. So shakes 33 dollars, bottle water 71 dollars. Nice. I mean 70 71 quantity and the dollar amount. That's that's how those all those reports show um, under this other this section. It's called operations. Then uh, we have at the very top. What about your time card? Can you get the time card? Uh, yeah, that's a manager function. So I'm going to get into number three, number two. Okay. So here we have time card and payroll. So under time card, we can see everybody's uh, total worked hours and their breaks. Oh, actually, that's not the one. That this is the uh, this other one is called time card. Okay. For the sixteen. Once you show me this, I think I've got enough to uh, present. So.
We look forward to working with you. Okay. We 